Shark! Yeah, what am I talking about? No, it's not the shark that you're thinking about. But I'm talking about one of the Shark Tank celebrities, Damon John. In this video, I'm going to share with you my three key takeaways from my second sit-down with Damon John here in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad happening in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money smart guy, Matt Zapali here, hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois direct west suburb of downtown Chicago, Illinois. And I'm fired up for this conversation. Why? Um, as of the 2018 season, about 40,000 companies apply each season to get on Shark Tank, of which 158 actually get to pitch the Sharks, of which 88 of them actually make the show. So if the fact that I can get on and have a conversation with Damon John, not once, but now second time, what an honor it is to... Spent some time. And by the way, just want to let you know what a big giver Damon John is because he wanted to do this for the veteran, military veteran community. And so this first segment here, I'm going to share with you the importance of having a side business. When I was in the Marine Corps, and I was about to separate from service. I wasn't going to re-enlist. I was a single father. I had custody of my three kids. I knew I wasn't going to spend another four years in the military. So I decided to start a side business. And for some of you who think that I got all the time out of the time, or got another three, four, five years ahead of me, this is what Damon John says about the importance of starting a side business now as soon as possible, especially right now in the middle of the pandemic. Let's check this out. Now, Damon, I remember in the Marine Corps, uh, I was always broke. I was, I was not having any money. I was getting paid 850 bucks yeah. every two weeks. Yeah. And I remember Marines would have had side hustles. Mm -hmm. One was cutting hair mm. on the side. The other one was uh, fixing cars. Right. So they, they had some side business going. So do you think, even with somebody working a full-time job, they're going to school on a full-time basis. Do you think it's wise for them to have a side business on this? 120%. Okay. You know, there's the saying, your, 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 uh, your day job will never make you rich. It'll be your homework. Um, <laughs> and I worked at Red Lobster for five years, keeping the lights on in the house. Um, and I need Church's that. chicken. Yeah. I worked at Church of Fried Chicken. Yeah, I worked yeah. at Red Lobster. I worked at, uh, uh, you know, the popcorn stand. Uh, and I did that to keep the lights on and pay the bills. But then my side hustle was always something else. And one of my side hustles was this company called FUBU that I was doing. And I enjoyed doing it. Um, I knew the sacrifice of that. Uh, maybe I wasn't going to hang out as much. Maybe I wasn't going to have as many girlfriends. But, uh, you know, that gave me freedom, you know, freedom to make my own decisions and then in, to empower other people. And just to add a thought, the importance of having a side hustle is even if you never decide to transition as a full time entrepreneur, wouldn't it be great to have two incomes? one from your job and one from your business. That way you create options. You can either tuck that money away from your side business, you can reinvest that back into your business, or you can have some extra money for savings and investments, pay off debt. It's the benefit of having a side hustle. You want choices, you just don't want to be limited to just one income source, which is your job, because he or she that controls your income, controls your life and the decision you make in your life. And so the second part of this interview I want to highlight is the importance of setting goals. Oftentimes, people overestimate what they can do short-term, but underestimate what they can do long-term. Sometimes people think that they can do this in the next 3, 6, 9, 12, 24 months, but they misunderstand the impact and the power they have 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now. See, the thing with Damon John is in the early 90s, no one was thinking about FUBU. Matter of fact, from 89 to 92, he actually shut down his business because he didn't have enough capital to keep his business going. So he made a quick mistake there, but he learned from that. And next thing you know, he builds a $6 million brand. So in this segment, I want you to see the importance of setting goals and how important it is for you to have something in front of you every day to remind you how great you can be. Let's check this out. What would you say the best way is for you to set a goal and then hit a goal on and on and on over and over and over again? Well, you know, um, I said it many times about my goal setting techniques and um, Goals are to set and have a goal in mind is, I think, the key to success. Because if you don't set the goals that you want to accomplish, you're going to let other people set the goals for you, right? <laughs> you're going to let them say it hasn't been done before. The world is over. You're going to embarrass yourself. You're going to embarrass us. That didn't happen in our family. Right. I've never heard of that, right? right? Um, and I'm not saying those people are haters. Those people just may not have the vision. So... Listen, I, I learned this from reading the book um, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill when I was 16 years old. So I set 10 goals, and I read them every night before I go to bed, five days a week. 
uh, before I go to bed and when I wake up. And six of them expire in six months. The other expire, the other four expire in two years, five years, 10 years, and 20 years. The reason I read them before I go to bed is because um, science has proven that over 70% of the things you think about when you go to sleep is either what you fear is gonna happen to you or what you hope is gonna happen to you. And I want to think about those things as I'm sleeping. That's the last, you ever, you ever go to bed before you look at a movie and then all of a sudden you're thinking about that movie all night? Well, I'm thinking about the goals. Wow. Right? Um, and in the morning I read them because it's the first action I'll take. I'll take one of those actions. Those goals will range from health to family to business to various other things. And I'll take one action towards those goals. I never hit my six month goals because I set them so high. It's just after six months, I reset them again. Now maybe one of those I tried and I really wasn't into it, I'll change it. Um, and the two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, I envision them. You see, when you, when you, when you think about a goal, you have to actually envision it, right? right. Um, you have to envision if you want that house, I always say, is it a brass doorknob or a, a glass doorknob? Is the door wood or metal? Is it two doors? One door when you open it up, is it a winding staircase or are you walking into an open room and you see your pool in the back and you hear your baby coming, you know, running towards you and you, you can smell the bread, yeah. right? <laughs> that, that's how, is, is, the, is the floor cold or warm? It's a heated floor. Which one is it? So detail, you're talking about detail. You have to envision that. Yeah. We envision being broke, being in a abusive relationship, being embarrassed. What, what happens if you keep envisioning that? Yeah, you become like, what you think about yeah, most of the time, yeah, yeah. right? You, what you think you become, you right? You have to keep envisioning that. You see that? What you think about, you become. Whatever your mind, and whether your conscious or subconscious mind decides to consume, that's what you eventually evolve into. Because how you see the world is how you do the world and how you do your goals. So to add further steps for you to establish those type of goals, watch this video here on how to crush 2021 like a millionaire. And in his next segment, Damon John talks about how he has learned and how he's handled failure. Other times people think, man, success, success, success. You see the, the bright lights, they see the end goals, and people often judge an entrepreneur or a millionaire by the end result, but without realizing there's many steps before that, and a lot of that is through the steps and pitfalls of failure. So let's check out what Damon John here has to say about learning from failure. You've said that failure is a necessary process. And, and I wanna know, we, we'd like to know, what specifically have you learned from, from failure? I learned you have to have financial intelligence. Um, I learned that you need to really trust your gut yeah. You need to think out decisions um, and not make fast ones. Yeah. You know, um, I learned that you got to constantly keep educating yourself. Yeah. I learned that some people, if they're not a good friend to themselves, they're never going to be a good friend to you. Yeah. You know, um, I learned that you can't fault everybody. You have to accept them for who they are and tell them where you stand and make tough decisions. Um, those are, I learned that you got to be vulnerable. You got to fail. You, sure. you gotta, you, but you have to keep failing. I mean, that's yeah. the only way you're going to get wiser at doing things. And yeah. yeah, and don't be ashamed of who you are. Own it. So, Damon, you, you know, the path of entrepreneurs has a lot of failures along the way. Yeah, you shut down Fubu between '89 and '92 three times. Yeah, how did you deal with failure? Well, shutting down Fubu between '89 and '92 was not a, it was not hard to deal with that. It was like, oh, I ran out of money. Cool. And then, you know, I saw a lot of people wearing the shirts and saying, man, I really love this. And I, I was like, well, now I don't have a way to get back on the video set because I don't have shirts to say that I'm dressing the artist. And yeah. I want to holler at the chicks on the video set. All right, let me start it back up. <laughs> right. But, you know, when FUBU went from doing 400 or $350 million a year to 100 million, you know, right after 9-11 when, you know, people were nesting and people weren't going out, you know, when you have to go from cutting 300 jobs to down to 50 and you had to cut 250 jobs, those failures were challenging. Very, very challenging. But I dealt with failures by trying to fail fast. I, I would, uh, if I felt that I can see the numbers are decreasing, well, I gotta be honest with my employees right away. Um, sure. I gotta give them enough time to go out and try to see if they can get something else to do or try to come up with new ways for us to do business instead of just putting my head in the sand. So dealing with failures are, get at it right there, 
get at it right now, make the tough decisions quick. Yeah. You know, you don't want to have a disease and don't want to pull back the skin to look at that disease. At least in the veteran community, if you're failing, you're, we're failing together. We're in the same unit, we're in the same mm. squad, we're same platoon. But as an entrepreneur, as entrepreneur, you're kind of like alone. You're you're the you're the CEO. You're the you're the founder. Yeah, and what you see is a big challenge, just like in the veteran community and the entrepreneurial community. There's a lot of mental health issues because of that, because you have no way to talk to, right? You can't tell your employees, you know, that you're, you know, if you don't get this one account next month, everybody's gone. Right. I mean, you want to walk in the office and see the boss like this? <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be like, oh, let me get my resume. Polished up, right? Take I gotta give go. me some tissue. I, got, I gotta go, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, uh, your employees have to be able to depend on you to tell you their problems because right. you need to be there for them because whether you can answer financially or time wise or, or give them different things that can help them, you know, you probably have financial stress at home with your significant other. And, you know, financial stress is the number one reason for divorce, right? And you can't tell your clients your problems either. So people, um, when they're failing, you know, look at Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain. They seem to have the best lives ever, right? So whether it's a veteran or whether it's an entrepreneur, you need to talk to people. You need to realize there's more people out there with similarities and same problems in different ways that want to help. Um, and, and that's how you deal with stress, getting it off your chest with people that you can respect and they can give you some real criticism and or just a damn shoulder to cry on. No, personally, for me, I've always felt strength with having these three people constantly in my life. The first person is somebody that's pulling you up. That's an easy one. Finding a mentor, finding somebody that can lift you up. In this case, Damon Johnson, somebody, to, whether it's a shoulder to cry on, somebody to bounce ideas off of. P typically for myself, the mentor I look up to, I do very little crying on their shoulder. And I talk about how I'm adapting to the situation. The second person that's been a beneficial part of my life is somebody I can roll with. It's my running buddy. Somebody to look to my left and to my right, boom, they're running along. I don't have to remind them to get up and get to work. I don't have to remind them to commit. I don't have to remind them to be disciplined. They're right there. So find those people in your life. The third type of person that you need in your life is something that you're pulling up to as well, something that you're teaching, something that you're imparting. All this stuff that you're sharing and receiving, you also need to be giving. And I found a way to deal with failure is helping somebody avoid their failure too as well. So that being said, everybody, I hope you got some nuggets out of this interview with Damon John. Also, big thanks to Kurt Tez Riggs, a military influencer, to ask me to do this interview on behalf of his virtual event called Honor to Lead, and also Joe Carter of Leader Pass to set up the production and execute on this in a very profound manner. So it's an honor to serve our veteran community once more time. To watch the full interview with Damon John at his wonderful estate in New York, please go to Damon John's YouTube channel here. We'll put the descriptions and the link below in the description area. And uh, if you've been watching this and you have your thoughts, follow-ups, questions, and feedback, please drop in the comment section below. And as you know, I get back to everybody as soon as I can, as soon as you drop them. Uh, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like. If you've got some value out of this thing, make sure you follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications next time we upload our next episode. That being said, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, Continue live smart, continue love smart, and be money smart today.